Rock 95.3. And I'm going to go to the phone. And we're talking to um, Marge Marge Davis, right? Right. Okay. Marge, um, I saw you uh, last week at the uh, um, at Mayfest over at uh, MCC. And right. you had all those all those birds over there. And I, I, my, my, my son, Peter, um, I know, knows your, your, your husband. And uh, he said that it was just you know a great show and stuff like that. He said he was a, a great guy and and I, anyway, so I, I saw your bird show over there. It was it was quite quite impressive all the birds you had over there. But I, I missed the show. I guess you had over there. Well, it was it was briefly done at a central time so that as many of uh, my first graders as possible could be there. About half of them were, and at one o'clock they uh, sang their environmental songs that they've been working on about saving the animals and saving the rainforest. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I missed that. Now, now you teach what, at Morris Shore Schools? Right. I'm at uh, the Camp Bell Building. Okay. I teach first grade. Okay, so you teach first grade, plus plus you also uh, teach about, about the birds themselves or educate people about the birds or what? Yes, yes. When uh, outside of school, I go to a number of places almost Everywhere that I'm called and asked, in, uh, including uh, I've done some of the critter care uh, camps for the Humane Society in Ottawa County last summer, and churches, uh, Sunday school classes, other elementary schools. A week ago, I was at Central Elementary here in Grand Haven, and uh, then they had a youth fest just a couple weeks before that, and uh-huh. I was there. Every week, there's some place to go outside of school hours with different themes. And uh, since I have, oh gosh, I think it's 15 different species of uh, parrots now, I can tie it into areas. Uh, For example, one of the churches I went to for a youth group, they were studying the Amazon, so I took strictly my South American background birds. Okay. Now, how many birds do you have, do you have yourself? I mean, you... <laughs> Everyone asks that. Uh, I'm not a bird breeder, and I don't intend to, to be one. Um, I have eight large-sized parrots, seven mid-sized, and then a whole bunch of littler ones that have been uh, hatching clutches like crazy. <laughs> we've had uh, in the classroom, we've had baby budgies, which most people call parakeets, many clutches of those have hatched. Um, okay. We now have some baby lovebirds that I'm hand feeding, baby cockatiels. We've had a baby dove. Oh, so really? It's hard to pinpoint on any <laughs> given day how many birds there are. So um, you must have, you must like live in a mansion though <laughs> with all these birds. I mean, some of those cages are huge. Or, or don't you use the cages much? Not, well, they have, the big birds have huge cages and right. uh, we're on Lake Michigan, and the, the room that they're in is 20 by 20 on the outer edge for some of them. But we, I will admit, we now have a, a bird room, a bedroom, <laughs> that one of, the, uh, uh, one of my kids no longer used. So the beds have been removed, and the Amazons and uh, my big macaw are in that bedroom. Okay, so you got a bedroom just for the birds themselves. Yes, yes, <laughs> and it, yes. When you talk to bird people, you often find that they begin to fill other rooms. Now, see, I was going to—I was going to say that I was going to introduce you as the the bird lady, but I, I thought maybe you might be offended offended by that. But you said you call yourself the bird people as the bird people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, me, most people I uh, frequently walk with the birds, particularly in the in the summer weather along the boardwalk and the beach close to where I live because. They are so acclimated to being with people, with the, the children, and to change, to keep them um, that outgoing and friendly. And most people know me as the bird lady. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. In fact, in Peru, in the Amazon, my first year, they made a, a video for the educational workshops that they used to sell the program. And... Um, that's what I'm referred to with in <laughs> Peru also. Okay, so so we can just call you the bird lady. Okay. Sure. Well, you should have your card there, Mar- Marge Davis, the bird lady on there. Well, yeah, I grab- <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does say on my card, though, um, 
environmental education through aviculture. Yeah, I know, but bird lady sounds so much better. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, that's true. Everyone would know exactly where I'm coming from. <laughs> yes. But, you know, that, that was one thing I noticed, too, at the Mayfest, that um, when you held those birds out there for display, they were all out of their cages, and, and people would go right there and, and just pet them or, or whatever, and they were very friendly. I mean, Yes. Uh, they, they're all hand-fed and domestically hatched. Both of the different bird uh, clubs that I belong to, and most people who are into exotic birds are very, very supportive of people buying um, domestic hatched babies. It, uh, it's against the law now to import all different kinds, but there are still people smuggling birds in, oh, really? and uh, those are the ones that we want to encourage. They leave them in their natural habitat. Most of the species that I have are endangered in their their natural habitat. Oh, really? So you're doing uh, something doing something that way for the environment, then, also? Yes. Oh, yes. Very definitely. Okay. Yes. Now, how, how do you find time to hand feed all these birds? I mean, you, you work. You, you you know you do your your first grade you know, school at Mona Shores. I mean, you're a teacher at Mona Shores. How do you find time to hand feed all these birds? Oh well. The hand feeding goes in according to the age of the babies and so forth, but I guess typically, like right now, my uh, three baby lovebirds, I get up all a little before six, and uh, I have they have a heating pad for warmth and what have <laughs> you, and feed them, and then when I go to school, they go along with me, and when I leave school to go to a meeting such as I had Tuesday night. I had a board meeting for a bird club. I took them there um, so that I can feed them at school or wherever I go if it's time for those babies to eat. Okay. I have the, the, uh, the materials with me and I feed them and then we go on to the next place. That's that's uh, now so so I, we bring them right to the school. I, I, I didn't know that. I know you brought them right to the school too. Oh yeah and uh, the smaller birds, the uh, uh, the adult lovebirds, budgies and cockatiels, and I have a pair of parrotlets. They stay at the school, and different children can uh, take them home for the weekend with parent permission. And then, as we have clutches of babies and they're weaned, a lot of uh, a lot of people because they're handled and very very lovable little birds uh, get them for their I give them to them for their children as long as it's a good home but oh, really? each morning when I leave for school I have some big birds and mid-sized birds in the car with me and uh, uh, they spend the day and then they come back with me at night and here at home the cages are huge but they're really only for when it's uh, it's bedtime um, they don't, some people have the idea they roam throughout the house. They, they don't do that. They are confined to the area where their cages are, but they do have uh, swings and play gyms and oh, toys really? and all of that. So these, the, so these birds probably got a better a better room and uh, playroom than, than most kids get, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, uh, they, they get into things, and I allow them to make messes that I would never have allowed my uh, human children to do. <laughs> so it's, Your human children, okay. Yes, uh, uh, it's, I get reminded of that, too. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but, all right. Well, that's, that's, that's uh, you know, like I say, I was very, very fascinated by the birds. I mean, it just they were so, like I said, they were so well behaved. I've never seen birds like that before. I mean, you know, because usually they're always caged up, and you, you, you always got little signs on the cages. Please don't put your fingers by the cage because. Oh, yeah, no, that's that's the thing that through the the bird clubs through education that we hope to change that there there is the possibility and there uh, the exotic birds have been called. The, the pet of the 90s. I don't refer to them as pets. I call them companions because with their uh, intellect and with their ability to speak, particularly the, uh, my African gray, it's, it's not a pet situation. There's a constant interaction. Right. Um, you know, I, I have a dog, a cat. I have two beautiful iguanas, but uh, they don't 
Sounds when like my house. Rings, they don't say hello like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some of the birds do. Yes, yeah, well, I have a ribbon snake, some some fish, a cat, a dog. You know, that was the one thing I was always going to ask you, too, because my daughter wants a bird, but the cat that we have is very... It's a Persian cat, and it likes to it likes to attack things. Uh -huh. uh, it's already attacked my ribbon snake. It's already killed a, a, a guinea pig that we had, or a gerbil, rather, that we had. Uh, we got a hamster, but we got, we watch it very carefully. You know, I, you worry about that cat. Yeah. Now, and what about what about that? If, if we were to get a bird, do you think it would be better for us not to get a bird with, with a cat like that, or... Would it be a place we could put the bird so the cat couldn't get at it? or Well, when I first started out <coughs> excuse me, with the smaller birds, that was a great concern because my Simon is a huge cat, and he had in the past gotten animals outside when he would sneak out because he's not even supposed to be outside. But um, in all honesty, uh, he is somewhat intimidated by the bigger birds. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't think uh, about that. We had no idea that he was even going near them until my oldest big one, my African gray, started to meow, and then we knew that <laughs> Simon had been out there. But we, we never leave a bird out unsupervised. Okay. Um, that's, that's just become, like, second nature to us. If, okay, so... Uh, if they're out and playing... And uh, we have to do something, and we're not going to be be uh, able to observe them. If we hear a, a funny sound, then they have to go in until we can return to to be sure that they are supervised. Okay. I, he stays away as much as possible, but I would never take the chance uh, of something something happening. Yeah, because she just wants like a, like a parakeet or something like that. So, I mean, that would probably be that was too small of a bird. That would be a very easy prey for a cat. So. Well, they make, they can be wonderful, wonderful talkers and can make good pets, but they are a size that entices a cat. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, well, we'll have to think about that one anyway. But, uh, now, what about what about you? Do you do you you said you give birds away to uh, homes that you feel are are fit for the bird or whatever? Mm -hmm. Do you encourage that, or, or do you, is is that something? I hear your birds in the background. Yes. Do, is it something that um, you want people to know about, or? Well, it's a matter of uh, when I have them available, and I do for uh, the Muskegon Community Schools. Okay. Uh, at night. In the fall and in the winter, I did a little bird care class, and I, the thing I focused on was for people to be sure of that they knew what kind of bird was going to fit their, their home style. And if I have any of those available and people express interest, um, then I give them what... Uh, Mainly, it's been up to date baby budgies, but with all of these other babies uh -huh. that I've I've now got, that <laughs> will that will branch out some. A lot of people uh, see me at the programs that I do, or where I take the birds uh -huh. to uh, to show them, and they'll come up, or they'll take one of my cards and call me and tell me when I have one available. They would very much like to like to have one. Okay. These are, are such different babies um, because of the hand feeding and the handling by all of my first graders. The, the babies are handled e even before they're weaned. Right. The children have them. And they're, they are really exceptional for the most part on the way in which they handle the birds. Uh, it amazes people who are bird people who've right. been at it for years. Oh, okay. Okay, even, even the bird people, it amazes. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I, I, was, I was very surprised, all those birds out there in the cage. Now, so should, should people contact you then? Or where, I tell you, where, where are you going to be appearing next, where people can come and, come and see you and the birds? Oh, okay. Um, well, right, I don't have dates and what have you yet, although next uh, Thursday night my kids are going to do a little bird show at my school down on our end of the of the hall on the west end of uh, Campbell School in, in Mona Shores. Okay. And uh, they're going to be by the different species to tell. They each have a big report book, and they can tell them the who, who it is, what it is, where they're found in the wild. Uh, these first graders all know the tropical continents that they come from and which one is, is from which one. 
and uh, there are some other bird club people who are going to bring in some different kinds of birds, uh, very uh, rare hyacinth macaw. They're, it's reaching the point where there are probably more domestic ones than there are left in South America. And then around 7, the kids are going to do their songs, and they're, they're putting together a skit on a wonderful, wonderful book, The K-Pak Tree. Uh, chicken pox has hit my room. We have five out right now, <laughs> yeah. but we're filling in spaces so we can do that. And then I have, uh, with no confirmation dates, some uh, groups coming up this summer, but really well, I could, guess could, just calling me yeah, okay. um, right. would be the way I've been doing it so far, and it it is something that is a commitment and a passion. There is no fee. I just like to get out and to share them with people and have people understand that they can be so different than what they look at in a zoo or maybe in uh, a setting where there's a lot of different kinds of animals and this bird is sitting lonely in a in a cage off in a corner with no toys or anything. It's, right. it's so different from that. I, I hear one in the background saying hello. <laughs> yes, that's my macaw. Uh, I have all my boys home for an overnight, and uh, they're out in the other room where most of them are, but I'm in my bedroom, and across from me is the bedroom with McGee. And he's, okay, so uh, they're that far away, and I can hear them that, that, that clearly? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Geez. Oh, a macaw? Yeah, <laughs> noisy. <laughs> sure can. Okay, so would you would you like to give your number out then to if people sure. want to contact you? Um, on my cards, I give both my school number and uh, my home number, and they can up until school closes. Um, they the office if they call there, they'll tell them um, when I'll be available, or they'll take the number for me to recall them, and that's uh, Campbell School. Seven five five two five five zero. My home number is a Grand Haven number uh, eight four two six nine one one. Okay. So then if they want to get a hold of you, they can do it that way. And I've got the numbers here if they didn't catch it the first time. Okay. And uh, so they can contact you and find out about the birds and where you're going to be at so they can see them. I mean, you really got to see it, though. I mean, people really got to go out there and see it because it's, it's quite quite amazing how, how you take care of your birds. Oh, it's great. It's, it's, they're different than people had ever imagined. Uh, some of us from uh, the Glass Group in Grand Rapids took some of our birds to the the private dedication at the Meyer Botanical Gardens. And uh, the benefactors of the botanical gardens, when they came through and came up to us with our birds, uh, they had no idea that these beautiful creatures could be so gentle and so caring and affectionate. They were they were amazed, and most people are. Okay. Well, and, and like I say, that we'll, we'll get the, give the numbers out again, and if people want to contact you, then uh, they can find out more about the birds. And I appreciate you talking with me today and sure. taking your time. And just one other point, okay. uh, a, a thing that, that I advise for people, and it's there's no cost, is I can also give them, them information on two wonderful bird clubs that they might like to go to a few meetings to see all of the different kinds of species if they're thinking about a bird. So they can decide on what one they want, they really want. Yeah, yeah, we have speakers, vets, the whole thing, and it's a good route to go to be educated. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for calling. Okay. Okay, hold on just a minute, then I'll I'll talk to you a little bit more, but uh, I'll take a little break here. And uh, I appreciate uh, Marge Davis, and she's, uh, <laughs> I like the bird lady the best. But anyway, we got the numbers here if you want to contact Marge and uh, find out more about uh, birds if you're a bird lover or if you just want to be interested. If you're interested in birds and want to find out more about them, I got the numbers here for you. It's a call. From the filmmakers who brought us Top Gun.